and we saw how to create a principal component analysis of some gene expression data. And here I want to add some additional elements so that we understand how to color the individual objects in our principal component analysis scatter plot, as well as add a legend from the data itself and learn how to modify the way that principal component analysis is visualized so that we get better separation between groups of samples. So let's go ahead and start. The first thing we'll do is we'll use a library called ggfortify. ggfortify is useful for principal component analysis and things like autoplot, which is a modification of how ggplot works specifically for this kind of data. The second thing we'll do is we'll load our data. So we'll call it expression table. Last time we took an expression table and we transposed it. This time I've already prepared a transpose table. The problem is that whenever you do the transposition here, you lose one of the key items in the table, which is one of the column names. And so saving that file correctly, separately, uh, is going to be very useful. So we'll use read table. And here I already have a link for that file. And I'll put this link in the comments. Remember that we need to do sep, which is the separator, is the tab, so it's a tab delimited file. Header equals true. Check names equals false. Well, actually, here we don't need to do that. So we'll do just header true and row names equals one. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to create a data frame and from the expression table, if you actually look at the expression table, uh, you'll see that there are first two rows that have the name of the sample and the group ID. So let's view this expression table. To do that here, we'll do print and expression table. Let's run it. So as you can see, we have here the name of our sample, and we also have a group name. So you can see here that you've got some group names, and you've got the sample names, and then that's the group. Okay, so now uh, that we know what's in our data, we can uh, go ahead and run our PCA. So we'll create the data frame and that will be just rows 2 to 16. So this will be expression table. Uh, we already took the first row as the names, so we only have two. So that would be 2 to 16. And we can do PCA or sorry, PCA will be PRComp and here we'll add DF and now we can visualize it. So auto plot PCA. Let's see what happens. Okay, so just like last time we see here some of the samples, but we don't know which ones they are. Of course, we can label them. Uh, so if we just add label equals true, we'll see that whatever is stored in our row names, which are the sample names, is going to be displayed. But it's not very useful because what we want to do is we want to know the color by group. So let's delete this. And instead, we'll say that we'll use the data that we originally loaded, expression table. And we'll take from here one of the columns that is called group to label our data.
Oh, sorry, made a mistake right here. All right, so as we can see, now we have our sample types colored by different colors. And the colors are displayed right here in a nice legend. So if we look closely, we see that this is the luminal samples, and here we have the basal samples. And one of the luminal samples is actually fairly close to these, as well as these are fairly close to, so the basal and the normal like it's fairly close together. The result of this analysis could be placed uh, and the different samples could be scaled. And the way we can do that is we can add here scale with a dot equals true. Let's take a look at it now. Now you can see that there's a fairly good separation between all of our groups. Here we have the luminal in the middle of the basal like, here are the normal like, and here we have also the cloud and low. So they're now nicely separated. We can also center doesn't really change much but the plot moved a little bit so everything now is more aligned to the center of this chart so this scatter plot now is centered around this zero zero position so what we get is a pretty nice uh, chart that you can use directly in your reporting of whatever data you've analyzed and it's a very simple uh, uh, script that literally has one two three four five five lines and importantly, uh, don't forget that this color comes from a column. So this should be an actual column name in your source data. Of course, as usual, remember to check out the full tutorial on code.omicslogic.com. It's a new site where we are offering a number of different tutorials, including in R and in Python, on how to run different types of statistical analysis, visualization, and machine learning algorithms on omics data. Until next time.